powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Riesiger, a prominent Billings businessman and former state director for Conrad Burns, facing federal charges for bilking one bank out of tens of millions of dollars and attempting to defraud others. 47-year-old Todd Capser arrested and charged today with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and one count of wire fraud, as well as one count of identity theft. The U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York says Capser misled a Canadian financial institution into lending him $43 million and then tried to scam other institutions when he fell behind behind on that loan. Prosecutors say in December 2018, Capser admitted to a bank representative that he fabricated a company and an account to get a deal done saying, quote, I fabricated it all, everything, absolutely everything. Now, Capser graduated from Skyview High School and Rocky Mountain College, served as state director for former U.S. Senator Conrad Burns in the early 2000s, and is a former trustee at St. Vincent Healthcare. He is also currently an assistant coach, track coach, at Central High School. Faces up to 42 years in prison if convicted. You can go to KTVQ.com for more details. The Judiciary Committee voted to hold the U.S. Attorney General in contempt of Congress for not complying with a subpoena to turn over the full Mueller report. That decision could set up a fight that could land on the steps of the Supreme Court. Natalie Brand has the latest from Capitol Hill. The ayes have it. The House Judiciary Committee members voted along party lines Wednesday to hold Attorney General William Barr in contempt of Congress. We've talked for a long time about approaching a constitutional crisis. We are now in it. Today's hearing comes after negotiations broke down between Democratic Chair Jerry Nadler and the Department of Justice over the release of the full Mueller report and underlying materials. The constitutional crisis is a committee that is asking from the Attorney General things that they, he cannot give. The Department of Justice insists it would be illegal for Barr to comply with the request and sent Nadler a letter ahead of the vote stating the president has exerted executive privilege over the entirety of the subpoenaed materials. The Attorney General is actually upholding the law. The contempt resolution could now go to the full House for a vote and potentially set up a lengthy legal battle over the documents. Georgetown Law Professor M. Tia Johnson. Whoever does not prevail at the district court level is going to appeal it, and then it ultimately could, could wind its way to the Supreme Court. The White House calls Chairman Nadler's actions a desperate ploy and says neither the White House nor Attorney General Barr will comply with Nadler's, quote, uh, unlawful and reckless demands. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now the DOJ issued a statement after the contempt vote calling the decision politically motivated. In 2012, Republicans held former President Obama's Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt for failing to turn over documents related to the Fast and Furious scandal. Well, tonight, an update and closer look at the first year of Project Safe Neighborhoods Yellowstone County. We, it, this marks one year collaboration between county and federal agencies to combat violent crimes. Q2's Jenny Fick has the story and results. According to FBI crime reports, violent crime had increased in Montana by over 35% from 2013 to 2017. Yellowstone County was identified to be one of the areas in Montana with the highest rate and growth of violent crimes. So this group of law enforcement leaders that you see up here today met to talk about why violent crime is increasing here. And the unanimous conclusion was the primary cause is meth. We are in a, an epidemic and a crisis like the like of which we've never seen before. Since the implementation of PSN, the rate of growth of violent crimes has come to a halt. Last April, law enforcement leaders in this room committed to a two-prong approach focused law enforcement, and meth prevention and treatment. This requires the collaboration between federal, state, tribal, and local law enforcement. I think we're targeting the right crimes. We focused on arresting meth traffickers and dealers, armed robbers, violent felons with firearms, and violent felons with outstanding warrants. Over 850,000 doses of meth have been seized, 212 firearms have been taken off the streets, and 170 defendants have been charged with meth trafficking, firearm offenses, or robbery. The next level for this task force is another unfortunate side effect of these crimes, neglect and abuse of children. In 2018, over 500 children had to be removed from their parent or guardian due to substantiated neglect. In cases involving drug use, 
as the reason for the removal, over 60% of those cases involved meth use by the parent or guardian. PSN will help to prevent the demand for meth through the Yellowstone Substance Abuse Connect Coalition. We have to look at the root causes. We have to have a better understanding and, and, and work harder at prevention education. In Billings, Jenny Fick, MTN News. Thanks so much, Jenny. Now, U.S. Attorney Kurt Almy announced a press conference in Missoula in a few weeks to discuss how western Montana is getting a handle on some of the same problems. Now, the coalition here will also host a meeting on Friday, May 10th at 11 at Riverstone Health. You can head to this story at KTVQ.com to learn more. Well, three men have been sentenced in federal court for hunting a mountain lion inside the boundary of Yellowstone National Park. Austin Peterson, Trey Yonke, and Corbin Simmons are all from Livingston. They all admitted to crossing the park's boundary on December 12th of 2018, shooting the mountain lion, taking the carcass back to their vehicle. Each of the men will pay $1,700 in fines and serve three years of probation, during which time they will be banned from hunting, fishing, or trapping. A faulty de-icing sensor on a United Airlines flight forced a plane heading toward Denver around and around and then back to Billings. The aircraft left Billings around 11.15 this morning and shortly after an issue with a wing was noticed. The plane had to circle for 30 minutes to burn off fuel before it could land. 48 people, including the crew, were on board. As of this afternoon, the plane was still sitting on the tarmac. And a fire late this afternoon caused about $300,000 damage to a home in West Billings. It happened at 805 North Fork Trail near 56th Street West. Deputy Fire Marshal Andrew McLean says the fire caused heavy damage to the garage and moderate smoke damage throughout the home. No one was injured and the cause is still under investigation. The Sydney man killed after being dragged from a truck Monday has now been identified. 66-year-old Michael Payett died after he was caught between his truck and trailer. A worker who was moving Payett's truck didn't realize he was there. That accident happened on private land near Sydney. School District 2 still coming off the high of a big win last night. The district passing its first operational high school levy in a dozen years. Now the unofficial tally shows 60% of voters said yes to the $971,000 mill levy. The levy will fund classroom materials and add career readiness counselors to the district's high schools. So a convincing win for education and billings. But in Laurel, just a few votes keep the elementary levy alive tonight. Current numbers show it passing by just five votes. Of course, district officials hoping for no changes before official counts are released Monday. Meanwhile, the high school building reserve levy passed by more than 100 votes. And disappointment for those with the Shepherd School District as voters rejected a $17 million plan to renovate the high school. The schools haven't had any major upgrades in about 30 years and staff says they're running out of room. Superintendent Scott Carter telling us the district is already back to work and looking toward the next vote. We're feeling optimistic. Um, we're disappointed about the vote. But to see the citizens get involved with the school the way they have is encouraging. Um, and so I think there's a lot of positives to take away if we need to adjust some things. We'll adjust them, and that's what the voting process is about. Now, the Shepherd School Board met tonight to work with the architect to find out how they can cut down that initial ask. And Carter says that he hopes to try again as soon as possible. Well, for years, McFinney's operated a small convenience store on the corner of 5th Street and Grand Avenue. That is, until last month. That location, of course, has been especially appealing for nearby neighbors and the high school students across the street at Senior High. We're told the owners of the land wanted to raise the rent and pull out the gasoline tanks, which we learned this afternoon contaminated the site. Crews started last Friday ripping up pavement and digging out the old gas tanks. Co-owner Bev Munchak says they likely will just close up shop and focus on their other two locations. Although this store was not their busiest, Bev says it does sting a bit because of the high school rush. Now, today we also heard from a nearby business owner who says he's hoping something great will take its place. Any other business that comes in, it's just more traffic, more business traffic for the whole surrounding area. I'm kind of hoping for a fancy restaurant myself, but. Q2 spoke with marketing specialties, the company removing the tanks. Now they say the site was monitored for years for toxic levels and the soil will now be sent for testing.
All right, on the weather scene, we're going to head down south where rainwater causing some major problems, Bob. Yeah, there's a phrase in Texas called a Texas frog strangler. That's a type of storm we're talking about. Let me show it to you on a Doppler radar. This was last night in the Houston area. And take a look at all the heavy rain that was falling around uh, Sugar Land in the Houston area. Now, let me show you what it looked like for real. Let's go there right now. Look at some of the water here. Uh, this, they had all sorts of levees breaking in parts of uh, the Brazos River. And so all sorts of flooding from basically Houston all the way up towards towards parts of uh, Missouri. It was just a lot of rain there. In some cases, they reports of almost 10 inches of rainfall reminded some folks of the hurricane a couple of years ago, Hurricane Harvey, which you might remember that's the one that produced over 50 inches of rain in the greater Houston area. So that's what they're facing today. This is, believe it or not, all part of our scattered rain showers, all part of a much bigger system that started with us some scattered rain showers here in the north. And now that's starting to move away, and so is our rain. We'll have more on that coming your way in a few more minutes. All right, thank you, Bob. Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, agriculture isn't just a man's field. Women are involved in every way. Next, what one firm hopes to learn from women in ag. And students pairing heavy metal in school, but this time no instruments are involved. And in sports, Scott chats with Cola Bad Bear. Dominant enough to join the Athlete of the Year conversation despite missing nearly all of her senior season. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.